What if I told you that some of the minds behind the first iPhone and many other Silicon Valley veterans are now working to replace it? They believe technology went in the wrong way, and now they want to fix this. They get to show anything to the public, but some investors had many nice things to say about them. This is humane, and now I'll show you what I think they have been building. Let's start from the beginning. What do we know about them? As I said, not much. The only official pieces of info they release are their website and a teaser trailer. And both of those are more about promoting their mission than anything else. From some of the interviews the founders took part in, a somewhat clearer idea of their mission emerges. The relationship we have with our devices now is overpowered by the density of information that people have to contend with on a daily basis. And it's what we're doing at Humane, looking at restoring that balance, making it so that the devices are no longer a burden. But they're actually what they're intended to do, and that is um, to, to make you feel superhuman, not be enslaved. The main idea, the main problem they want to fix apparently, is tech addiction. I would guess specifically smartphone addiction. After hearing it straight from one of the co-founders, the meaning of the trailer becomes even more obvious. Not that it wasn't pretty clear already, but yeah. So, the device is not a smartphone, nor is it a smartwatch, or a smart glasses, or a headset, or anything like that. It's something entirely new, it seems. I was blessed to be part of a of an incredibly small team of colleagues that brought the iPhone to the world. In effect, what we did was we brought the information age to the masses. What we're doing at Humingain is we are building from the ground up. The next shift in technology is going to be led by AI, ML, and CV. And it's important for us to recognize that, like the impact of the information age, the intelligence age, is going to have an equally impactful impact on, on all of society. Whatever they're building, it seems to rely heavily on AI in some way, which by itself doesn't really mean much, but... The ultimate, ultimate interface with computing is one that completely disappears. And when, when, when that completely disappears, then we turn back to our humanity. And that's when everything starts to get resolved in the right way, right? The device they want to build, apparently, is one whose interface is almost non-existent. One that does as much as possible in the background, and that only gives you the information you actually need, when you need it. Now we have a clearer picture of what they are working on, but it's still not enough. Luckily for us, we don't just have to go by those few nuggets of info they gave us. We actually have something way bigger. The patents. Shout out to Sam Sheffer, many of you probably already know him since you're watching this video, but still. He made an incredible documentary about this company, which was actually how I discovered this whole thing in the first place. He analyzed the interviews, the patents, just about everything, and provided a coherent explanation for them. I also read the patents, and I pretty much agree with his hypothesis. Apparently, this device basically has the internals of a phone. Tons of sensors, an SOC, a camera, a battery, but it doesn't have a screen, and it's meant to be worn. Not on the wrist, it's not a smartwatch after all, but on clothing. It'll be capable of detecting all kinds of objects, people, and environments, essentially understanding what it's looking at. It'll do most of the stuff in the background, also with the help of the cloud, so that when you ask something, for example, what is that building, it'll be able to answer. It's essentially Siri, but a hundred times better. I tried to make a concept of how I believe a similar device could look like. We don't know much about Humane, but considering their origins and the branding of their website, I tried something pretty minimal for the hardware. Which only makes more sense if you consider that this device is meant to be worn. I imagine they will provide many different magnetic attachments to wear it. Maybe a clip, iPod Nano 6th gen style, or simply another magnet that you can put behind clothing. You should be able to take photos, record audio and video, and do most of the things you can do on smartphones. Just without you having to hold the device, and sometimes without you even having to do anything. One of the key features of Apparently, is that it should be able to take photos automatically, recognizing moments it thinks you may want to revisit. Obviously, this is one of those features that the user must have a way to deactivate. The privacy implications are pretty obvious. But even then, what about everyone else? How does anyone know if they are being recorded? This was one of the main issues of the original Google Glass, which future smart glasses largely fixed by adding an LED. In my concept, I added an entire LED ring just so that there's no doubt. The ring also serves a secondary purpose. It encapsulates all the sensors, including the camera, in a circle, reminding of the general shape of camera lenses. Plus, it's just something that will look iconic. That's why I didn't go for a basic LED dot. Okay, so this device is essentially an hardware-wearable smart assistant that takes photos. Cool, but if it doesn't have a screen, how does it communicate information? And also, how does the user even interact with the device? Many interactions I imagine will happen with voice. The user will speak to the device, and the device will speak back. Nothing new, nothing unseen. But many things simply cannot be conveyed through audio. 
and that's where the real madness begins. Apparently, this device is going to have a projector. Yes, I know, it sounds absurd, but this is actually one of the things everyone seems to be pretty sure about. Not only do we have patents showing how it should work, but it was literally shown in the teaser. Apparently, many things will be projected on the user's hand, or on other surfaces when it makes sense. If I ask the device to tell me the distance between Rome and Milan, for example, the most logical way would be to either spell the answer or to project it on my hand, in a similar way to how Siri would do it, really. But let's say I want to measure how large is this speaker. It's right in front of me, so why not show it like this? Anyway, even if this device is all about ambient computing and doing stuff by itself with minimal UIs, I think it needs to have at least some always present interfaces to do basic stuff. In my concept, it works like this. The device, in general, has a basic gesture that's used to start a projection, to unlock the device, if you will, which is showing your palm to the camera. Usually, it would display this screen, a very basic lock screen with the date, the time, and maybe some widgets. It's actually more similar to the watch face of a smartwatch than the lock screen of a smartphone, but whatever. By tapping that button, you can see the all notifications, but most importantly, by swiping from the right, you would see the app drawer, which is instead browsed vertically. On that page, by swiping from the right a second time, or swiping from the left if you were on the previous page, it's essentially a looping carousel, you access a control center of sorts, which can also be accessed from anywhere in the US by rapidly closing and reopening your hand. If you get a notification, or a call, or something like that when you are not seeing the UI, the device could give you an haptic feedback of sorts, like the Apple Watch which would be the universal way of requesting your attention to project stuff. And in that case, the first thing you'd see would be the notification or the call, without the rest of the UI. This whole interaction works pretty much like on watchOS, but instead of rotating your wrist, you raise your pole. With the thumb, the user can do the universal gestures to go back and forward. And since this device has a big emphasis on asking the assistant for stuff, I think it needs a gesture just for that. It would be way better than adding a random keyword like hey assistant or something to every query. In my concept, that gesture could be something like pretending to be holding a microphone. It's quick and makes sense for the action in question. Since this device has a heavy emphasis on the camera, I think it makes sense to have a couple of gestures dedicated to that. By pinching the device once with the hand, it could take a photo. By long pressing for one second, it could start a video. This device would have many similarities with smartwatches, but the simple fact of not being limited by the tiny displays these devices have, because it doesn't have to only project on your hand, it can project on every surface, I think makes it in inherently more capable of doing much more stuff. With a bit of work, I think even this incredibly weird form factor should be able to do everything a smartphone can do. But I do have my perplexities. Maybe, somehow, we all wrongly interpreted the various patents and this is not the real form factor. But this device is surely not going to be like anything we've already seen. And it's definitely not going to be a pair of smart glasses. The patents already make it somewhat clear. But in case you're not convinced, they literally trademark the phrase the future is not on your face. Yeah, it's not glasses. But is this the right call? I mean, I know ex-Apple designer with years of experience, including stuff like the first iPhone. What do I know? But considering the kinds of interactions you may want the users to have with this device, and the kinds of info it should be able to display to the user, why this form factor? This device always needs to have some kind of surface to project stuff on, at least for info that can be conveyed with sound. The user's hand could work fine most of the times, but glasses simply don't have that limitation, they can project stuff in midair essentially. For the sake of the video and the argument, I'm assuming this mysterious device from Humane is possible, even though it sounds really absurd. This is straight up science fiction, okay? But the company exists, they have credibility, the investors have already showered them with money, somehow it all works. But that doesn't mean they can change the basic rules of reality. What do you do when you are in a really crowded place, where it's not possible or easy to raise your hand so that the device can see it, the info that is projected, because it's a projection is also visible to everyone, not just you. Isn't that horrible for privacy? Also, AR simply wouldn't be possible here, unless they somehow found a way to create 3D holograms. Maybe there is a way around all these problems I'm not thinking about, but essentially it all comes down to this. What does this specific form factor allow that wouldn't be possible with smart glasses? That may be my bias because I do believe smart glasses are the future and I've had that belief for years at this point, but I really can't think of any reason why this device, even considering their claims and their mission shouldn't just be a pair of smart glasses. Even after all that, I still can't wait to see the device once they finally unveil it. I just want to see how it works so bad. Anyway, on the topic of smart glasses, yeah, I do believe they are happening and that, unless something better comes out, they will replace phones. Even Apple is hinting at that more and more. If you want to see why I think that's the case and how I'd make them, I also made a concept for that. Check it out if you want. 
Ciao.